Hey everybody, happy Hanukkah. Hope you've had a great week of Hanukkah. And I hope you enjoy the last few days. And as we head into Shabbat Hanukkah, we're going to read Parshat Miketz this week. And this contains the story of the, the beginning of the story of how Yosef and his brothers reunite. And it starts with a famine in the land of Israel and in the land of Egypt. Now, Egypt has pre prepared properly for it because of Yosef, but everyone else didn't. And so when it gets terrible in, in Canaan, Yaakov sends 10 of his children to go to Egypt to get and procure grains. Egypt has those grains. The Torah describes that the children of Israel came amongst all the many who were coming to Egypt at that time to collect, to try to procure grains. And they, they came. And this story of the ten brothers of Yosef, Binyamin didn't go, becomes, according to the Midrash, quoting Rabbi Simon, the paradigm, becomes the paradigm for the idea of tefillah b'tzibor, of communal prayer requiring a minimum of ten, that the magic number for a minion is ten, because the ten brothers of Yosef here come to Egypt seeking grain. Now, there are other explanations given why how we get to the magic number 10 for a minion, but this one is very odd. There is nothing at the surface that makes this story stand out as the reason that we should have a number of ten, the number 10 for a minion. It's just a, a group of 10 brothers who went down to Egypt looking for grain. What does it have to do with communal prayer? So there's another midrash that picks up on the language used when describing the brothers of Yosef coming down to Egypt. The Torah says, asra, that the brothers of Yosef came down as a group of ten. Now, if you look at the context of the story there, the beginning of Perak uh, Mambet, there's, n there's nothing about this story that would have required us to say, and that ten, the, brother, the brothers of Yosef went down. We should have said, that the children of Yaakov went down because Yaakov ordered them to go down to Egypt. So it should have said, Vayerdu b'nei Yaakov or b'nei Yisrael asara. In fact, two psukim later, as I read before, it says, Vayavo b'nei Yisrael, that the children of Israel came into the land of Egypt as they were seeking the grain. So why is it that they were described initially as the brothers of Yosef? And so the Midrash there says that actually when they went down, they weren't just looking for grain. They had this tremendous guilt for what they had done years ago to Yosef. Something we actually see play out in the story in the text of the Torah. There was tremendous guilt but that they did this. Years later, they clearly regret it. And they all, the Midrash says, agree that when they were going to go down to Egypt, because they had a good fear, had a feeling that that caravan, when that, that he got sold, uh, you know, uh, when he emerged from the pit, he got sold in the, to the caravan, went down to Egypt. Maybe he's in Egypt. And so as they go down to Egypt, they're not just looking for grains, they're looking for Yosef. It's an amazing midrash. It speaks to probably some level of, it's just realistic in some ways, that they kind of always kept their eyes open wherever they went in life. Maybe they could find Yosef. Make amends for what they had done. Now this is all very nice, well and nice, but what does that have to do with a minion being the magic number 10? How does this moment in time when they go down to Egypt looking for grain and for Yosef have anything to do with tefillah b'tzibor, praying in the context of community? And actually, if you think about it very carefully, it actually has a lot to do with praying in the context of community. And we base our prayer a little bit on what happens here. They are going for a personal need. That's what really spurs them to come to Egypt. They need food. But at the very same time as they are trying to take care of their own needs, they are also concerned with the needs of someone else who they think is struggling and suffering, and that's Yosef. And they're keeping him on in their mind and trying to actually find him. And this is exactly what we do when we daven. When we say the Shemon Esrei, the weekday Shemon Esrei, where we ask for, we have requests of God, for wisdom and health and prosperity and forgiveness, etc. Notice, yes, we're asking for things for ourselves that we need. But notice the language in which the bracha, brachot are written. It's in the plural. We ask for it in the context of everybody. 
We don't just daven for ourselves. We think about ourselves, and at the very same moment, we are thinking about those around us who may also have those needs. And more broadly speaking, the idea that we come together and we all daven in the same space and that sort of enhances our prayer, what does that have to do with anything? You know, oh, you're standing next to me, you're sitting next to me, how does that help? I think the tefillah of its is exactly what's happening here with the brothers of Yosef. They're not just concerned about themselves, but what they want to do is bring peace and prosperity to the group as a whole. And that group was lacking Yosef and they were looking to fix that brokenness that they created, but they were looking to fix that. They saw that there was someone out there who wasn't feeling the love. And Tfilah B'Tzibor, praying in the context of community is not just about praying, but it's actually supposed to bring us together as a community. That is, that is supposed to be the result of praying in the context of community, that we feel a sense of that community, that you care for me and I care for you, that it's not just about ourselves, that it creates a community where there is a feeling of love, of mutual respect, of peace and of tranquility. That is Tefillah B'Tzibor. May this story of the brothers of Yosef seeking to find and make things right with Yosef as they take care of their own needs, may this inspire us to continue to have a community which is filled with love, filled with respect, filled with peace and tranquility, even with those who maybe we disagree, but they're part of our community, and they're part of what we're doing here, and they matter. May we all play our part in ensuring that those around us their needs are met at the same time as we try to take care of our own needs. Shabbat Shalom and have a happy Hanukkah.